Tales from the Jails with John G. Sutton. Of course, today we're going to be talking about <coughs> the escape from HMP Wandsworth, which is uh, a massive prison in London. And <coughs> the man that escaped was called Daniel Abed Khalifi. And uh, how did he escape? Well, apparently he was dressed as a chef, so he'd be working in the kitchen. And uh, he managed to get himself underneath one of the delivery vehicles and hold on to it underneath until it drove out the prison. Then he'd be off and uh, out with some of his friends. Because he's obviously been assisted in this. He hasn't gone and done it on his own, has he? So what was uh, Daniel Abel Khalifi? Abed Khalifi in prison for? Well, he was on remand awaiting trial for terrorist offences. He had apparently been uh, plotting uh, various uh, nefarious acts and uh, he was considered to be a Category B inmate. Well, that doesn't seem to me like a Category B kind of an offence, you know, plotting uh, destruction in mainland Britain. Uh, that would seem to me more like a Category A offence. But, of course, the prisons are vastly overcrowded. And uh, what they're doing, what has to be done expediently. Apparently, uh, from all reports, uh, HMP Wandsworth is, as I've previously been banging this drum, vastly overcrowded and understaffed. So there's over 1,500, 1,600 inmates in a prison that was built in 1851 to house just over 1,000. So it's, and apparently the average uh, overcrowding rate is 60%, although it's been as high as 80%. So you could get nearly 2,000 inmates in there. Certainly at strange ways when I was there in the 70s, we managed to get nearly 2,000 inmates in, well, over 2,000 at one point with them sleeping on the floor. But the problem that you've got at HMP Wandsworth is that uh, the staff are not interested because they're not being properly paid. They're not being properly trained. There is no central training school. When I was in the private harping back to this, but there used to be central training schools where you went for three months training as a prison officer. And then you were on 12 months probation, so you were being observed and reported on all the way through. And uh, that doesn't happen nowadays. Nowadays they have local recruiting. And the reason, obviously, that they've got local recruiting is that uh, they no longer offer staff accommodation. Back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, early 80s anyway, staff were offered accommodation. That is reasonable housing in the immediate vicinity of the prison. Of course, in somewhere like central London, where a three-bedroom terraced house will cost you nearly a million pounds, the Home Office are not doing that. They're allowing the, uh, the staff to find their own accommodation and paying them less than £30,000 a year, which is not even subsistence money in London. It may be good money in Hull, or it, it, it's not even good money in Manchester. But in HMP, Worm, uh, Wormwood Scrubs, Wandsworth and Pentonville, in the Greater London area, or Central London area in the case of Wandsworth, it's a pittance. And uh, apparently, by all reports, on one night at Wandsworth, only seven members of staff turned up for the night shift. 1,500, 1,600 inmates locked in the cells and only seven staff. How are they going to cope with that? Now, having having dealt with it, I mean, it, it's extremely difficult. I mean, not only was I a discipline officer at, at the time, I went on to be a hospital officer, and we dealt with inmates who were having psychotic incidents. Because somewhere like Wandsworth will have inmates who are suffering from drug withdrawal symptoms, alcoholism, uh, they could be psychotically disturbed. And in the middle of the night, in a, in a multiple occupancy cell designed for one, uh, in the early part of Queen Victoria's reign, uh, we're going to see that there can be trouble. And when the trouble kicks off in the middle of the night, you've got to open it up 
if you've got three or four battling inmates on your hands and seven staff for the entire prison, oh yeah, you're in trouble. They could lose the, lose control of the prison very quickly. Now, they don't seem to be addressing this, do they? The, 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 the government, the Ministry of Justice. And as, as an obvious problem here, they're having escapes. One serious escape. Now, it only needs this man, uh, Daniel Abed Khalifi, to get involved in some kind of major terrorist incident. And heads, well, there's nowhere heads to roll. They don't work there anymore, do they? They can't recruit the staff. And if they're recruiting teenage girls to run the prison, what? What do they expect? What what does the prison authorities expect? What does the Home Office expect? Uh, there was a, a very interesting report that I saw on uh, on one of the sites on the internet. Just go on the internet and have a look. It's on the BBC site actually, where one of the ex inmates of uh, Wandsworth, uh, a guy who who had been sentenced for tax uh, fraud. Uh, it, so he was a, a, a white collar inmate and he was in there and he, he compared Wandsworth to uh, a, a dystopian faulty towers because he said it looks ominous from the outside but when you get in it's absolute chaos with the staff not knowing what on earth they're doing they won't do what that what happened was I think there was a a, a, a new way of thinking after the the strange ways riot the, the the Home Office and the Ministry of Justice whatever it was yeah decided that they would get rid of the old guard the dinosaurs you know the the, the people who who used essential force really to control the prison get rid of them and we'll bring in some uh, better educated more sophisticated. Uh, woke uh, prison officers mm, very well and good where are they and how do they deal with an angry man how do they deal with uh, a series of inmates that decided they're going to take the prison they're going to reason with them of course yeah we don't think you should be doing this you know it's not really in the best interests of the of the prison whoops there goes my ear yeah Woo. It's uh, d a difficult job, and you've got to pay people properly. The answer, I feel, to the overcrowding and the problem with staffing issue is to put the staff on 14 days on, 14 days off, and pay them a proper wage, like £50,000 a year for the inner London, and on an incremental scale. You know, so you'll start off at say forty thousand, and it goes up to fifty thousand after a period of five years. So that way you retain your staff, because they've got an incentive to stay. And and the outer prisons, you know, the feel like the Hull and uh, Wakefield and Manchester and all that, just slightly down thirty five, because you'd have a London waiting, wouldn't you? Thirty five going up to forty five. So you get like an extra 5000 a year for working in inner London. They've got to do something serious thinking about this. And I don't believe that they are putting their minds to it. They certainly seem to be putting their minds to partying. But not very much to actually dealing with the problems in the prison system. And the prison system will, there isn't any doubt about it, run out of control. It's already, they're already neglectful because they don't know what they're doing. And uh, Daniel Abed Khalifi is a, he's a 21 year old man. He was last seen wearing a prison issue chef's uniform, a white t shirt, red and white checkered trousers, and a brown steel boots, steel toe cap boots. Yeah, but he won't be wearing them now, will he? He will have arranged this with some of his uh, colleagues. And I believe that the people who are associated with the van that he went out of may know a little bit more about this than they're saying, but who am I to defame them? 
Yeah, be that as it may, I'm sure the police will find out. Yeah, uh, and if if you actually uh, see this man, avoid him because he's obviously going to be deciding to stay out because he won't want to go in. So that's one of the big problems today. It, it's not just HMP Wandsworth which has brought this to the public's attention. I mean, the public should be seriously concerned. Look at the location of Wandsworth Prison. It's right in the middle of London. And London's been expanding for the last 150, 200 years. So London has actually grown around Wandsworth Prison. And it's massively right in the middle of, the, of, of, of a massive built-up area. So people are seriously concerned about this, and rightly so. I mean, if I was living within, say, 50 yards of Wandsworth, I'd be a bit concerned. And Wandsworth is already notorious as being the prison from which Ronnie Biggs escaped. I mean, it was straightforward. They put a, a, a big uh, furniture van alongside the wall with a ladder cut, a, a hole cut through the roof. They put a ladder on the, a ladder on the roof... Biggs climbed up out from the inside onto the ladder that was at the outside, down into the van, and off they went. That was how Ronnie Biggs escaped. So, if you have a look at the BBC site, yeah, and and you can see that uh, that, that that the big article on there, all about this, it's it's a disgrace. The Home Office haven't got a clue what they're doing. They think they're wide awake. They think they're going to treat prisoners with great respect, which I agree. Prisoners should be treated with a degree of respect. But the first object of the prison system has to be the secure containment, safe, secure containment of prisoners that are committed by the courts. And that is my take on HMP Wandsworth's prison and uh, the problems faced by the prison service, which seem to me they're not actually looking at this in a meaningful manner. You've got my number, guys. Give me a ring. I've got to have more ideas than you lot. Song dinger. Yes, folks, I'm not going to sing you a song. I'm going to read you a poem. This is by Rudyard Kipling. This is The Way Through the Woods. They shut the road through the woods uh, 70 years ago. Weather and rain have undone it again. And now you would never know there was once a road through the woods. Before they planted the trees, it is underneath the coppice and heath and the thin anemones. Only the keeper sees that where the ring dove broods and the badgers roll at ease, there was once a road through the woods. Yet, if you enter the woods on a summer evening late, when the night air cools on the trout-ringed pools, where the otter whistles his mate, they fear not men in the woods, for they see so few. You will hear the beat of a horse's feet, and the swish of a skirt in the dew, steadily cantering through the misty solitudes, as though they perfectly knew the old lost road through the wood. But there is no road through the wood. There you are. The Road Through the Woods by Rudyard Kipling. Tales from the Jails, folks. John G. Sutton. Do like and subscribe. Thank you.